Good morning, CSL, Simi Valley, and welcome to Virch's Center for Spiritual Living's Virtual Church, coming to you live from the Rambo Van Gelder Multipurpose Room Studio. <laughs> so happy to be with you this week. We have 31 days now, 31 days till Election Day. Have you figured it out yet? How are you going to vote and where are you going to vote? That's what I'm talking about, not how, like in that sort of who and what issues are you going to vote for, that's totally up to you. We have science of mind principles that can help guide you for that world that works for everyone in that process of doing your civic duty. But you have 31 days to figure out whether you're going to mail it in, absentee ballot, or go to the polling place and have you checked out where your polling place is. Yeah. Special service today. All kinds of really neat things happening. I'm going to start with our guest artist. Our guest artist today is Patricia Bahia. We've had her in the center. You know she's got awesome songs. In fact, her songs are award-winning, and they continue to win awards. Today she'll be debuting two songs which recently won Peace Song Awards. They were nominated. They won the top awards. One of the songs is called uh, Every Heart, One Love, and the other song is called uh, Yes, uh, world with a little more love. Mm, you're going to love them. They're, they're wonderful. I may play one of them twice. Who knows? We'll see how that works. And then we have a, a guest speaker today. His name, is, his name is Barry Fleet. He's coming to us from the East Coast, but Barry Fleet is an incredible motivational speaker, a life transformer. He, he talks about bringing forth your inner magnificence. It reminds me of Dr. Jim, right? What does he say? You're magnificent beyond measure. Barry Fleet's going to be here to remind you just how impossible it is to measure your depth of magnificence, but it begins with how you think about yourself. Don't want to get too far ahead of that, but that's what he's here, the teacher, the trainer, Barry Fleet. So this is just some of the things we do, reminding us of how we're supposed to participate doing our civic duty, working on behalf of creating that world that works for everyone, starting within our own homes and taking it out into the world. Science of Mind, as I've said many times, we've done great at manifesting parking places. We've done great at curing diseases. Can we now cure the dis-ease that is moving through our world, through our teaching? My answer to that is yes, we can. And part of that way is by releasing our inner magnificence. Join me now as we say our vision and our mission statement together. Here it is. We're a community, inclusive, loving, and authentic. We celebrate all paths to God in gratitude, empowering self and others. We serve compassionately through outreach, inspiration, and education. That's who we are. That's why we're here. And here's what we do. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the virtual service of Center for Spiritual Living, Simi Valley, our virtual church service. We are so happy that you are here. If you're here from Simi Valley, or maybe from Minnesota, or maybe from Spain, we welcome you. We are so glad that we are together. And I'm happy to be your announcements person this morning, because lots is happening this week. So you can enjoy the service this morning and then you can stay connected throughout the week with Center for Spiritual Living Simi Valley. So we start with this Wednesday. This Wednesday, we have the Simi Community Salon. During the Simi Community Salon, we express spirituality through the arts, through fine arts, through poetry, through story, through music. 
and you can come and bring your own piece a song you wrote, a poem you wrote, a piece of art you made. We have had some beautiful sharings and shared within the community. Or you can present a piece of art that inspires you. For example, I love John O'Donoghue. I often bring a poem by John O'Donoghue. Okay? And if you don't want to share, you just can come and listen and be inspired that way. Now, I just want to tell you a quote by Norman Fisher, what he said about art and spirituality together. Norman Fisher says, spiritual practice requires imagination. If we really want to go beyond the surface of things, if we really want to go beyond the surface of things to the deeply hidden actual experience of being alive, we need imagination as an ally. The senses, reason, even our moral and emotional faculties are not enough. So come and join us on Wednesday. Bring your imagination. Watch and listen to the beautiful art shared or share or and or share your own piece. Okay? The meeting ID to join the community salon is 832-8701-2651. There's no passcode. There will be a waiting room. Now, before the Simi Community Salon, Debbie Jervis will offer her Yoga with Debbie, an hour of spiritual yoga for everyone. It's a workout for your mind, body, and soul. And it starts at 5.30. So the Zoom information for yoga is meeting ID 878-5693-8671. And the passcode is 253-932. Saturday, October 10th. It's wonderful. At 9, is it 9 o'clock? Yes. At 9 o'clock, the men's group meets through Zoom. And they're called the Giants. Sorry, had to think for a second. So our men's group, the Giants, meet at 9 o'clock. Our women's group, the Sacred Sisters, meet at 10.30. They both meet through Zoom. So here's the information. The men's group... You know, their monthly topics open our men's hearts and expand their capacity for loving engagement with all aspects of life's journey. The Zoom room address or meeting ID is 852-8380-5667 and the passcode is 463-827. So the Sacred Sisters meet meeting ID is 908-747-6278. And the Sacred Sisters dive into an exploration of life and ways to live it more joyously. So can you imagine the men meet at 9, the sisters meet at 10.30, and then we're coming back together in peace and harmony. Love it. Our weekly offerings continue as well. Play and Learn with Dr. Susan is available on YouTube. Dr. Susan also streams live on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. through the CSL CME website. Monday through Friday, sign on to Facebook to catch Reverend Stephen for practicing oneness at one. He's streaming live from his personal Facebook page, weekdays sharing inspiration and musings. <sighs> and then we have our centers, practitioners and ministers. And we're always available to you. We're always available for prayer. We love to pray. We love to affirm the highest for everyone. So you can find our contact information when you go to CSLC Me website and you look for practitioners. Or you also can call the office and leave a prayer request. You also can go to the website and leave a prayer request there because the prayer re request will be sent out to all practitioners and ministers and we will all be praying for you. So go for it. We love it. Today's service will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, CSL Simi Valley. That's the name of the YouTube channel. And please let your friends who missed the live broadcast know that the service is there. You also, of course, can share it on your fa Facebook page or send a link to the service through Messenger to your friends. Hey, that's an idea. The service will also be posted on the center's website homepage. There'll be no APRA Verge today. APRA Verge returns next week. <sighs> Welcome, everybody. Once again, we're so happy you're here. 
Now we will be hearing Sherry Deeds singing one of our favorite community songs. And while she's singing, share the service on your page, on your Facebook page right now. Just click on that little arrow. It's so simple. Let's spread the good word. Thank you for being here. Love being together in this way. Welcome to Art, Affirmation, Reading, and Treatment. Uh, I'll read the affirmation once, and then I'll invite you to read it along with me. Knowing that we are each a reflection of the infinite self, your magnificence shines all the more brightly as I reveal my own. Okay, together. Knowing that we are each a reflection of the infinite self, your magnificence shines all the more brightly as I reveal my own. So speaking of reflections, my uh, reading today is um, from a post from somebody I uh, connected with on, on LiveJournal, gosh, 10, 12 years ago or more. Um, and uh, it's entitled Mirror. If you could be a mirror, and I could see myself. Would I be good or maybe bad or maybe something else? Sometimes I wonder really if it's simple as can be or if no being great or small could truly mirror me. It's really quite remarkable and complicated too. If you're a mirror facing me, then what is facing you? Oh, what an endless question. But if you think you'll see that mirrors facing mirrors reflect infinity. Okay, one more time. If you could be a mirror and I could see myself, would I be good or maybe bad or maybe something else? Sometimes I wonder really if it's simple as can be or if no being great or small could truly mirror me. It's really quite remarkable and complicated too. If you're a mirror facing me, then what is facing you? Oh, what an endless question. But if you think, you'll see that mirrors facing mirrors reflect infinity. So join me now in an opening treatment. I recognize that infinity is just another name for God. God in, through, and as everything. So when we say mirrors facing mirrors, it's just more God, more magnificence expressing as each individualized self. All are reflections of that infinite divinity. Yep, 
God does it all with mirrors, reflections upon reflections. I am magnificent beyond measure, as are you. There is no spot where God is not. So I make my declaration here and now that every being I encounter is now revealing and becoming aware of their own magnificence. And through their reflection, the magnificence of the universe is now revealed. Grateful for the infinite power in every reflection, I release my word into the law. And so it is. Good morning, CSL Simi. So glad to be joining you here in the Virch. Today I'm excited to be bringing you two brand new songs that were just recently honored with Peace Song Awards. And I'd also like to offer you this poem by Hafiz. Sing, because this is a food our starving world needs. I invite you to sing along anytime you feel so moved. Thanks for having me. see that you've been hurting and your world feels like it's spinning out of control pushing through the wind and the rain you keep on searching but it's so dark you can't see which way to go You try so hard to hold it all together You've been at the mercy of the changing winds forever But who you really are was here before the start of time You are not the storms that keep on You 
one sky Everything else is just the weather Clouds roll by The sun may hide for a while But in the darkest night the stars still shine It's time to relax into three minutes of silent meditation, the gap, the God awareness place. I'll keep the time and uh, this week I bring you a new bird, the, uh, the red ibis from Simi Valley Arroyo. Welcome back. You, uh, find something new and different to meditate on every day. Namaste. Every Heart, One Love is a song of unity. 
recognizing that we are so much more alike than we are different. <laughs> They got the answer, louder and louder now I'm drowning in a sea of anger Weak to judge, pass the blame, assign the labels Wish we'd all stop acting like we're strangers If we could see underneath We are one family And it don't matter, don't matter where you come from Every heart beats to the rhythm of one love One love was first invited to come speak with you, the invitation was, I don't know, last winter, maybe, maybe January. And I was so excited. I was so excited because there was a package that got put together. And the package was that I was going to spend a weekend with Reverend Patrick doing one of his primal fire retreats get back from that on Monday, I mean, on Sunday night, Monday, my wife was going to fly out and meet me. And we were going to have a few days of exploring Southern California. Never had time to do that before. Then on Thursday night, I was going to be talking with the Spiritual Unity Movement, their full moon ceremony. And then Sunday, I was going to have the privilege of coming and talking to you. And then March came. See, I was to be here in May, on the first, about the first week of May. March came, and we all know what happened. And so, as we evaluated things back in March and, and into April, and we, I started to say we knew we anticipated that by the fall, this would all be gone and we could be back to normal. 
And so we got rescheduled for this week. Well, obviously we didn't know what was gonna happen. Because here's the thing about Science of Mind. If enough of us knew that this was gonna be over, it would be over. So we had hoped that this pandemic would be gone. And when it was obvious that I couldn't, I couldn't be with you in person because you're not able to be with each other in person, I was very disappointed, very disappointed. And I kind of got myself in a funk over it. Like a lot of us, I've been really challenged by our current situation. I like being with people. I like talking to people a lot more than I like talking to a screen. But this is where we are. So my sense is that there are a lot of us in the same boat. We're being challenged to connect with the world in a different way. And what I know is I was teaching my psychology class the other night and gave them a couple of demonstrations about how we don't see what's there. We see what we're looking for. And it sort of doesn't matter what's there. We see what we're looking for. And we're in a place now where we have a fundamental choice about what it is we see. Because it really is about what we're looking for. And I put myself in the trap of looking for what's missing. I put myself in the place of thinking, if only. If only I could have been with you today in real time and real space. If only we could all be together right now in real time and real space and enjoy that energy. If only I could spend some time with my grandchildren. It's the longest I've ever gone without seeing my grandchildren. If only my wife and I could have come to Southern California and to explore it and just hung out and been here and, and soaked it up a little bit. If only I didn't have to figure out the technology so that I could teach in person and virtually at the same time. It's been quite a learning curve. If only we could go to the theater. If only we could just go out to a nice restaurant once in a while. It could go on and on. And I suspect you have your own list of if only. But what I know and, and what I want to share with you is that life is all about connections. Life is about not only who we connect with. So in, in Rhode Island, um, I don't know if you know, but it has a reputation of sort of being a mob state. And life was all about connections, about who you know. But what I'm talking about today is not about who you know, but what you know. What you connect with. A lot of us are connecting with the form of life. The more peaceful ones of us are connecting with the spirit of life. And that spirit with a capital S. It's easy to get caught up looking for what is missing because we have our own preconceived ideas about how life is supposed to be, how life ought to be, how I want life to be. And the extent to which we get caught up in that is the extent to which we feel depressed, we feel sad, we feel lonely. Joy just kind of evaporates from us. Our gratitude diminishes. And life sucks. Emmett Fox wrote a pamphlet, some of you I'm sure are familiar with it, called The Golden Key. And Emmett Fox 
said, here's the, here's the golden key to life. It's all right here. Stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, and think about God instead. You see, we can't connect with God and not feel grateful. We can't connect with spirit and not feel joyful. We can't, can, we can't not connect with spirit and feel a sense of peace and joy and love and harmony. It's when we connect with the form of life, with our problems, that we make life hard on ourselves. So this morning, I want to share with you three invitations about connection. The first is I want you to connect with spirit in you. I want you to connect with the spirit that is you. I want you to connect with what I call your inner magnificence. I don't know if you realize it, but the incidence of plastic surgery is increasing fairly rapidly. And the number one reason why more people are having plastic surgery is because of social media. They don't like how they look on social media. Now, I'm not for or against, actually, I am for plastic surgery. Um, it was because of an incredibly gifted plastic surgeon that put my face together after I mangled it pretty badly with a chainsaw one day. But here's the thing. If I am more connected to how I look than to who I am, I'm in trouble. One of my favorite things here. This is, looks like a rock. Looks like a rock. But for somebody that knows rocks, they knew that this was not just an ordinary rock. This was a geode. And their curiosity about the geode took them one step farther. And when they cut it again, there's a butterfly. And I think this is a wonderful analogy for us. Because a lot of us on the outside look like rocks. And the people around us look like ordinary rocks, just people. But here's the thing about us, and here's the thing about the people around us, and everything around us. There is something magnificent within. There always has been. There always will be. It never goes away. What does happen to it is that it gets covered up. It gets covered up by layers of protection, because somewhere along the way, we have experiences that make us conclude that there's something wrong with us, that the way we naturally are isn't good enough, isn't acceptable. Think about it. Think about a two-year-old with a bath towel pinned around their neck. They instantly turn into a superhero. They can do anything in the world. Their imagination is their limit. But here's the thing. The University of Iowa did a study and the average two-year-old hears the word no over 400 times a day. Think about that. When you're told no more than 400 times a day, 365 days a year, how does that make you feel about yourself? And it isn't that the average two-year-old is doing anything wrong. Yeah, they're not doing what we want them to do. But the average two-year-old is just being the average two-year-old. They're living life from their creative freedom, they're from their joyful state. They're, they're living life curious about the world, and they want to know how things work. And, and that's why they tear things up, and they stick things in, and they, they pull things out, and, and they, they just live life. But they get told no, and it takes a toll. 
Another study shows that somewhere between the ages of four and 11 or 12, most of us have one, at least one traumatic experience that shapes us for the rest of our lives. It inhibits us for the rest of our lives. I would encourage you to go to my website and watch my TED Talk where I tell the two stories that happened to me. One when I was six that caused me to make the fundamental decision, don't ever tell anybody how you really feel because if you do, they'll laugh at you. And one when I was 10, when I made the fundamental decision, don't tell anybody what you really think because if you do, they'll laugh at you. So by the time I'm 10 years old, I have already made a decision about how to go through life safely. Not how to go through life freely, not how to go through life joyously, not how to go through life exuberantly, but how to go through life safely. I was the poster boy for the imposter syndrome. I had lots of successes. People would look at on the outside and pretty successful, pretty successful, look what you did. But I lived with a voice in me that said, but if you knew what I was really like, you wouldn't like me. I went through life with lots of layers of protection. And then I had a couple of powerful experiences that I also reference in my TED Talk. And what I know for me is that before I could connect with the magnificence that was in me, I needed somebody else to see it. I needed somebody else to see it and believe in it and coach me, literally coach me into connecting with it. We need people around us who can see the oak tree in the acorn of our lives. We need somebody around us that can see all of our magnificence right now in this moment. Once we connect with it, life is very different. And so I ask you, when you get up in the morning, when you got up this morning, did you connect with your inner magnificence? Or did you connect with another day? Did you connect with a world that's just the way it was yesterday? So right now, I want you to think about if you didn't connect with, with your magnificence, if you did, wonderful. But if you didn't, what would it take? What would you need to do? Who would you need to talk to to help you Remember it, not create it, not discover it, but to remember it. So we need to connect with our inner magnificence. We also need to connect with the people around us. And it makes a difference when we connect with the people around us, whether we're connecting from our magnificence or not. It makes a difference whether or not we're connecting to their magnificence or not. I was talking the other day with a guy that works for the local sheriff's department. He said, Barry, the, he said, the number of restraining orders that, that I'm putting out has skyrocketed in the last several months. He said, and the really frustrating part is because of, because of quarantining, these people who can't live with other can't live anywhere else. They're stuck living together. And he said, honest to goodness, it's almost like two kids. He looked at me funny today. She touched my stuff. He, he said, it's funny and it's tragic. What happens is we lose touch with our magnificence and we fail to see the magnificence in the people that we live with. The people that we loved enough so much that we wanted to spend the rest of our lives with them, now we can't stand the sight of them. What has happened to us? Does your family get the best version of you? 
And equally important, do you look at your family and see the best version of them? Or do you see all their irritating little habits? Several years ago, I had a parishioner who sat in my office and in tears, she said, my husband is always working. And he doesn't believe me. She said, I, I try to talk to him about it. And he says, that's what I got to do to put a roof over our heads. It's what I got to do to pay the bills. It's what I got to do to maintain the lifestyle that we have. And she said, he doesn't believe me when I say I would live in a one room cabin with a dirt floor. If I thought you were as invested in me as you are your work. Now, if I knew then what I know now, I would have invited her to, instead of looking at the condition that he's presenting, workaholic, to look at him and see child of God, magnificent man, the man that I adored, the man that I wanted to spend my life with. See, I wonder how much of that vision he gets from her. You see, we need people who will tell us how wonderful we are. We need people who will see the magnificence we are. In my book, Move Into Your Magnificence, 101 Invitations to a Life of Passion and Joy, I have an essay in there called Your To-Be List. And basically the essay is this. A lot of us, most of us, get up with a to-do list. We know what we've got to do today, when we've got to do it, and, that, and we keep our to-do list going. But my invitation is to forget the to-do list. Well, not forget it, but before you get into your to-do list, make your to-be list. Before you get out of bed, think about how you're going to be today. When you're talking with your partner, when you're talking with your kids, when you're talking with your colleagues, when you're in the world, how are you going to be in the world? Are you going to be in the world with ordinary eyes? Or are you going to be in the world from your magnificence, looking at the magnificence of all that is? It makes a difference. Here's maybe the most challenging thing. How are you going to be with the people whose political perspective is diametrically opposed to yours. It doesn't matter which side. How are you going to be with those people? Are you going to be them as jerks and stupid? Are you going to call them names? Or are you willing to look at them and see them for who they are, not for what they're presenting, but for who they are fundamentally as expressions of the divine. That's a challenge. The third connection is how we connect. So the first is connecting with our inner magnificence. The second is connecting with the magnificence of others. The third is connecting with the magnificence of the world around us. The trap that I created for myself, the box that I put myself in, is I was relating to the world that I wish I lived in. I was, I was connected to the world I wanted to live in and completely disconnected from the magnificence of the world that is right now. I'll be honest. I've, I've been around raging forest fires, but mine was an experience with a controlled burn. And I felt the incredible transformative power of flames. And I've seen the new growth that's allowed that happens after the fire. Honestly, I don't yet see the magnificence and the devastation of all of the fires on the West Coast right now. 
I'm having trouble seeing the magnificence in the incredible bitter divide that is our nation right now. I'm having trouble seeing the magnificence in this pandemic, this COVID-19 experience that we're having. But when I remember, when I remember that it is all of spirit, everything that we sense is created by spirit. And we know that spirit is, the nature of spirit is love and joy and peace and harmony and connection. And even though I can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. It just means I can't see it. You know, it's just like the, the sun on a cloudy day. It's still there. I can't see it, but I know it's there. And so if you're in a place that doesn't feel peaceful, if you're in a place that feels troublesome, if you're in a place that isn't as joyful as you'd like it to be, remember, Walter Starkey, several years ago, wrote a wonderful book, and the title is simply, It's All God. That's all we need to remember. Whatever we're looking at, whatever we're experiencing, it's all God. Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of Ernest Holmes' teachers, had a wonderful phrase. There's not a spot where God is not. So be courageous enough, no matter what the outer circumstances, be committed enough to always look for the good, to always look for God, to always look for spirit. Just remember, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So I leave you with three invitations. One is I want you something to, what can you change about the way you think? What can you change about what you do so that you can connect with your inner magnificence, so that you can let your light shine? Two, what do you need to change about how you think and what you do so that your connections with the people around you are more harmonious, are more peaceful, are more joyous. And the third thing, what do you need to change about how you think and what you do so that your connection to the world as it is, is joyous and peaceful and harmony and good? Now, as you leave this place, go and do what you need to do Go and change the thoughts you need to change. Because what we know is that we live in the world that we create with our minds. So the extent to which you accept my invitations today is the extent to which you'll be able to say, I feel good about being me. And I guarantee it. Thank you. Thanks so much, Barry. It's now time for our healing prayer. This is our time when we recognize the divine presence and bring that presence consciously into our life to demonstrate the good that we know is unfolding each and every moment of each and every day. Join me now. There's one life. That life is God. That life is my life, your life right now. Everything in the manifest universe is an expression of this oneness. Wherever we see, we see its magnificence manifest in the good that we experience each and every day. And if that good looks like and feels like discomfort or dis-ease, that's okay because we know God is unfolding through the process of that. And we move through that as we affirm our truth and our good, as we look into that inner magnificence within us and call it forth and make it manifest as our experience in life. 
We understand the conditions of life can change, and by our word, we make that change take place, and we speak that word right here and right now. We speak that word that brings prosperity and harmony into people's lives, that removes any sense of lack and limitation. That idea of the yeah, buts, if I woulda, coulda, shoulda, goes away now into the promise and the responsibility for stepping in. I say the response ableness, the ability to step into our presence and into our good. We do that as we affirm, declare, and claim that nothing stands in our way, that the power we use is unstoppable because we use the power of divine consciousness every day, every experience, every breath of our lives. Take that breath with me now. And know that it is life breathing you as life moves through you. There is a spark of divinity that animated your very being that can never be desecrated, that can never be destroyed, that can never go away, that grows bigger as we acknowledge our responsibility and our ableness to connect with it. Claim that connection now. And in claiming it now, we bring peace and prosperity to the heart, to the hearts of ourselves, to the hearts of our community, to the hearts of our nation, to the hearts of the world. We are the healing presence calling forth good in every experience of life right now by our consciousness, by our ability to stand in faith, in truth, finding the answers in the heart and taking the steps that brings those answers into reality in our lives. Listening to the divine voice, going into the gap, feeling the intuitive spirit calling forth our good. We say thank you. We say yes to the call and step into action brave, strong, and proud because we are magnificent beyond measure. Affirm this truth with me now in deep gratitude as I release this prayer to a perfect law that says, yes, yes, it is my pleasure to give you the gift and it is our pleasure to say, yes, I accept. And so it is. Say yes to a world with a little more love. Something only you can bring It's supposed to put it all together Need every piece to make it complete Yeah, every note to make a symphony All the words to sing in harmony All the colors of the rainbow shining Everyone, everyone Say yes, say yes Say yes, say yes Say yes, say yes, say yes. Say yes. Go ahead and reach out your hand, open the door, say hello, a stranger today, you might get to know them. Little love just keeps on growing, changing life without even knowing. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. It takes everyone, everyone, everyone. Make a world with a little more love. Doesn't matter where you come from, gender or race, spiritual beliefs or orientation. Everyone has got the same motivation. Love is love, the same situation. Give love and help one another. In this world, there's only each other. One blood, the human race. If you feel the same, let me hear you say. Say yes. Spirit of abundance flows through me. It lives inside my breath. As I inhale, the flow of abundance resides in every breath. What we're talking about today is tithing. Cheryl truly loves to give. And what I was really curious about is, Cheryl, why are you so excited about giving? 
it was just so important when I saw the people that were that made up the center, what the center did, the the tithing that the center does, the uh, the organizations that it supports uh, on an ongoing basis, and it made me feel like this is a place that really makes a true impact in the community where it is. And it made me feel so good to know that if I gave to the center, that it was really giving to the community as well. Hey, if you would have the opportunity to say one thing, which you actually do right now, to say <laughs> one thing to the congregation, right, about giving, what, what would that be? There's no gift that's too small. I felt for the longest time, if I couldn't give something that was more substantial, I felt almost bad, like I can't do more, but it all truly does add up. And um, anything you can give is gonna be so incredibly welcome and blessed and will be go on to do more things. I know that every year I've been with the center, I've upped my, uh, I, I am a, a donor that gives automatically every month. And um, I've upped my amount every year and I plan on doing it. I'm, I'm gonna plan on even doing it more than I've been able to in the past. Cause I feel very lucky that both Jim and I through the whole COVID thing have been able to keep our jobs. And uh, I know not everyone has been that lucky. And so we wanna do even more than we have um, to make sure that this center is solid um, and that it can keep going and keep giving to the community. So please, Give what you can um, and know that uh, it's, it's, it's blessed and, and welcome and we'll uh, continue the, the circle. It's now time for our pledge. Join me now. Divine love is doing its perfect work here and now. Divine love harmonizes. Divine love adjusts. Divine love prospers. Divine love foresees everything and richly provides every good thing for CSL Simi Valley now. Divine love is victorious. So I recognize each gift in the virtual basket before me, knowing that each, each gift goes out into the world, revealing good and more good, that it returns multiplied a thousandfold, just like the mirrors behind me in this room. Grateful, grateful for each gift, grateful for all the good that it does, both for the individuals giving the gifts, for the individuals receiving it, for our community, for the greater community, grateful for it all. I release my word in the law. And so it is. Well, my friends and loved ones, we've come to the close of another Verge service, CSL Simi Valley, bringing church into the virtual world. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm so grateful for how we have been able to hold together as a community while we are apart. There may be physical distance, but there's no heart distance between us. And it's the loving hearts of our community that continue to bring this wonderful service to you each and every Sunday. I'm so grateful for our practitioner team, for our volunteer team, for our video team, for our audio team, for everyone that comes together to help this happen. Happen for you each and every Sunday. In particular, this Sunday, I want to thank Reverend Johanna for the announcements, the creative and ever uh, specially uh, 
visual guy is John Newbill. I mean, I love how he brings the various arts, the new bird that he brought us today, and the gap meditation, and the backgrounds that he seems to find are just fantastic. Our special musical guest today, say some gratitude for Patricia Bahia, the award-winning, winning two Peace Song Awards this year and debuting a couple of those songs with us here this morning. I want to thank the background support that gets us together throughout the week, that supports us in, the, in between our services. That would be Debbie Jarvis, who brings us yoga on Wednesday nights, and our entire team of Wednesday night folks, Reverend Maggie, Reverend Rob, uh, Mary DiVincenzo, Jennifer Darlene Bellis, Johanna and Dorothy Morgan Seeger. So all these folks that are coming together to bring you Excellent content during the week. Oh, i got to put John Newbill in that list as well because he brought us the silent movie and Jason Love with the comedy night. So we got all kinds of things happening here that we have to be grateful for. I want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Susan for the play and learn that she does every week and Gregory Seymour for recording those play and learns and uploading them to YouTube and Paulette uh, Jones for being our background web support, doing things behind the scenes that you never get to see. So I want to do a shout out to her for today. A special thank you to our governing member and an adjunct to the trustee board who did the contemplated abundance today, Cheryl Robinson Collins. And I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of what we do each week. Thank yourself for showing up. And thank you for being the presence, the change agent's presence in the universe, in the world today practicing the science of my teachers you're all practitioners in my life in my word licensed or not and that's what we get to do practice our teaching each and every day so let's close with our closing bit addiction then uh, gary lynn floyd and jamie lula will sing us out with in the name of love and you can sing along with it because the words are going to be there on the bottom of the screen are you ready here we go i'm at home in the heart of god my life is anchored in truth I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Hey, Simi Valley. We're grateful that you're here. This is from Floyd Lula. We love you. Here we go. Two, three. In the name of love, with a heart of grace, overflow in us and decorate this place. As it is below, so it is above. May we always stand in the name of love. When the veil is gone, there's only one of us, only one. In the name of love When the day is done We will sing this song All as one In the name of love In the name of love May we always be Seeking out the best Till we all are free Living in a world We've been dreaming of Where we stand as one In the name of love When the veil is gone There's only one of us Only one In the name of love When the day is done sing this song all as one in the name of love in the name in the name of love in the name of love in the name in the name of love in the name of love, the of love. when the vision In the name of love When the day is done We will sing this song All as one In the name of love When the veil is gone There's only one of us Only one In the name of love
the name of love When the day is done We will sing this song All as one In the name of love In the name, in the name of love